Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the great pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Shipman. How are you today, Matt? I am good, Brian. We're just days away from the Breeders' Cup. I've spent a lot of time preparing for this show. I think we've got some good information for the Horse Center fans. I hope so, Matt. Uh, this is a uh, a card or two cards ripe with a lot of wagering opportunities. We've both had success in the past betting on the Breeders' Cup. Let's do it again so the folks out there can win as well. Matt, we're going to jump right into the big one, the Breeders' Cup Classic. It was supposed to be a field of 13, Archangelo. Unfortunately, there was a hoof issue. He's been retired earlier in the week. Go Rocket Ride with a severe injury. He is out. So two of the principals, Matt, are out, which changes the complexion of this race. It makes the 12, Arabian Night, he looks like a pretty clear favorite now. Yeah, and, and certainly the uh, with Archangelo going out, uh, uh, it's going to have a significant impact on the on the, the odds in that race. Yeah, absolutely. Arabian Night, the favorite we expect. Uh, probably the Japanese invader, Ushba Tesoro, White Abario to be next on the uh, the the. the Favorites here is a second and third choice in the Breeders' Cup Classic. You can see the morning line there in the post positions. Matt, uh, Arabian Knight as the favorite. He's breaking outside. He's only had four career races. He's got other quality speed, namely Saudi crown in the race. For me, those are all viable reasons to bet against the favorite in the Breeders' Cup Classic. Yeah. Um, and, you know, a couple of uh, very talented horses um, that uh, – and what they do in the initial stages of the race is going to be significant. Yeah, there, there's some other speed in here, uh, but Arabian Knight and Saudi Crown really want the lead. They're both talented horses. Saudi Crown coming off a Pennsylvania Derby win in the slop in only his fifth career race for trainer Brad Cox. They should at least keep each other busy on the front end of this mile and a quarter race at Santa Anita. Six million dollars, Matt. Let's take a quick look at that pace projection. We got from Timeform US, and they are indeed saying fast pace. Saudi Crown, they have is the early leader, Arabian Night, not far behind, and not far behind both of them. And, and maybe sitting the trip in the race for me, Matt, is White Abario. He stalked and pounced the pace in the Whitney last time for his new trainer, Rick Dutchrow Jr., and looked very good in winning the Whitney. I think I think he sits a good trip in here just off those two three rolls. Yeah, Brian. Uh, um, you know, with uh, with the loss of Archangelo from the field, uh, uh, White Barrio, you know, has, has become even a more significant player. I will admit, though, Brian, I still have some concerns about the uh, the 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 foot problems that. White Barrio had earlier that kept him off the track a couple times uh, with the veterinarians. I'm concerned about how that's going to play out uh, uh, on race day. You just don't know. Uh, Dutro was very happy with the new shoes uh, that were fitted to White Barrio. He was very happy with the workout after those new shoes were applied, glue on shoes. Uh, I'm going to assume Dutro knows what he's doing and has White Barrio ready to roll, but. You just don't know. There are questions with him, possibly. There's a mile and a quarter is also a question with him. There's questions with Ushbar Tesaro, the other uh, horse that I think is going to get a bet a lot in here, in that he's never run against uh, uh, American dirt horses of this class for the most part, even though he's won the Dubai World Cup, which may have been not the best edition of the Dubai World Cup. But anyway... There's the pace projection. We'll go back to the field one more time, Matt. I, I also think there are horses that like a mile and a quarter in this race and can certainly rally up for uh, for a piece. Some of those might include the 13 proxy. Also the number two, Zandon. Yeah, we've got horses that have some experience going the, the, going the distance. We've got some horses here, as you mentioned, that are going to be rallying. So again, I get back to that, you know, that early pace, uh, um, where will uh, Arabian night be in terms of uh, 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 coming down the stretch and what will he have left along with, uh, along with Saudi crown, all of that mixed in with the, uh, 
the three-year-olds, those two matched up against older horses. Yeah, it, it's it's uh, dependent on the pace a little bit. I remember a Breeders' Cup where we thought Go Zapper and Roses in May might hook up early, and instead Roses in May hung back and let Go Zapper have a pretty easy lead. If that happens, it changes what Matt and I are thinking. But right now, Arabian Night, Saudi Crown, both look like they will press each other to some extent early and then try to carry that speed all the way a mile and a quarter. Both Matt and I think that could be a difficult task for the favorite and Saudi crown. All right, Matt, let's see. We're going to go right into our top picks for the Breeders' Cup Classic. By the way, 640, 640 Eastern time. Race nine is the Breeders' Cup Classic. This is a, this is a year where the Breeders' Cup Classic is uh, followed by two other Breeders' Cup races on the card, interestingly enough, on Saturday. Matt, we have the same top two picks here. Now, I'm going to say this. White Abario and Ushba Tesoro were my top two picks before the scratches of Go Rocket Ride and then Archangelo. And I, I think that's probably not true for you. No, absolutely not, Brian. Archangelo was going to be uh, was going to be my top pick. Um, but here we are. And uh, with his departure, I feel like uh, White Abario is is a significantly clear top pick for me. I have questions about Ushba Tesoro, uh, particularly uh, with his uh, misbehaving uh, when they took him near the starting gate a couple days ago. Um, so <clears throat> I'm concerned with that. Yeah, it, it, he, he did act up a little bit, but a lot of reports have him looking the picture of health since he's arrived at Santa Anita. By the way, while I probably have more confidence in these top two than Matt White of Barrio and Ushba Tesoro, uh, for me, it's not clear cut. For me, it was a tough decision who would be my top pick because I think Ushba Tesoro, seven for eight on the dirt, proven at a mile and a quarter, able to really finish off these races is a strong threat to White of Barrio. Anyway, my uh, top four are rounded out by Zandon. I slightly prefer him to proxy as my long shot to rally into the picture. Good mile and a quarter <clears throat> form. Uh, the Kentucky Derby and the Travers last year without winning. Hopefully he's got a little bit of confidence coming out of the Woodward. And then I do have Arabian Night as a obvious threat in here as my fourth horse. How about for you, Matt? Uh, yeah, after White of Barrio and Ushba, um, I'm going to take a shot with uh, some – prices more uh as you were saying with zandon i'm gonna uh, use a bright future from todd from todd pletcher and johnny v uh horses won two in a row including the jockey club gold cup uh last time <clears throat> and i've got a real bomb with uh clapton in the fourth spot trained by as i like to call him the other chad not chad brown chad summers this horse uh, recently came into his barn and ran a really nice race at Churchill Downs. He's going to be a bomb. He'll be a bomb. I'm not sure who he beat at Churchill Downs, but he'll be a bomb. I'm on Chad as a long shot, Chad Brown. You're on Chad Summers as a long shot with Clapton. Yeah, he should be high. All right, Matt, without further ado, we're going to jump to the other 13 races in the Breeders' Cup two-day extravaganza. We're going to go back to Friday. We're going to look at the juveniles, and I'm going to put up our top picks here for all the races, and we can stop ta uh, start talking about these races a little bit more. Uh, first race of the Breeders' Cup card is the Juvenile Turf Sprint, Matt. Five furlongs. It's good. It, don't, don't blink. You'll miss it. They're going to run this in under a minute. Sa uh, Friday at Santa Anita. Uh, big ebbs for me, Matt. Big ebbs. It, there's going to be a lot of speed in here. It might be just a matter of like who, like Golden Pal, who is fastest. And Big Ebbs has been absolutely dominant against two-year-olds in Europe. His only loss, something you don't see over in America, he ran against older horses. And that's when he faded out of the picture a couple starts back. But against two-year-olds, really dominant. Looks like a talented horse for me. I think there's a lot of potential winners, but he's just the one that stands out to me. Yeah, I agree. There are a lot of potential winners. And that it will be a fast pace and it is five furlongs and, and, and people who specialize in uh, handicapping these turf sprints talk about how there's a big difference between uh, the, the small distances that vary with turf sprints from five to five and a half to six 
they're they're all kind of unique. Anyway, I'm going with Amidst Waves from the Barn of George Weaver, not the only one that George Weaver has in this race. Um, I like the morning line odds of eight to one. The horse has won three races in a row. And last, sorry, sorry the, um, the horse had a really good second place finish last time against the boys at Keeneland. Yeah, Weaver's loaded. Weaver's got three of the top Americans in here. If I was going to look for someone to rally or rally in here, committee of one on the outside, a little disappointed. He was only eight to one on the morning line, but should be good odds. I don't think anybody will be a heavy favorite in the juvenile turf sprint. Moving on to the juvenile fillies. Uh oh, I'm starting out chalky, but tomorrow, uh, tomorrow looks to be the lowest, and and certainly on the morning line, she's the lowest of any Breeders' Cup race. I was just really impressed. I guess part of me is rooting for the daughter of Beholder to be the real deal, but she has looked like the real deal in only two races. You never know. She's moving to Santa Anita. She's moving to two turns. But uh, I've liked everything I've seen out of Tamara, and I just couldn't pick anybody else in the juvenile Phillies as my top pick. Yeah, I, you know, everything you said, Brian, I agree with. And, and uh, she is going to be very hard to beat uh, in this race. But, you know, with those short odds, and uh, and some questions that you mentioned. I'm going to take a shot uh, against her. I'm going to go with uh, Candied for Todd Pletcher. Uh, Candied is two for two um, and had a really nice win in the grade one Alcibiades last time. Yeah, coming off, coming off a nice win at Keeneland. I, I kind of like the Colts coming from Keeneland a little bit more than Candied. But Candied, Saratoga, Keeneland, she's done a little wrong. I actually think Todd Pletcher's other two horses in the race are both live bombs, uh, especially scalable, uh, rallying for second in a race with little speed out in California. She would be my top bomb in here. So Pletcher has a shot, but uh, tomorrow for me, the favorite. I'm not going to pick a favorite in the next race, Matt. It's the juvenile Phillies turf. I think this is another very wide open race. Uh, 14 of them, I believe, in this one mile turf race. And uh, really wide open. I had a tough time picking a winner, but I landed on Buchu. Phil Bauer has been doing very good things in Kentucky the last few years. He likes this filly. She's developing. She's got some experience. Her last two wins rallying and rolling by the field looked good to me coming off a graded stakes win at Keeneland. Yeah, uh, absolutely, Brian. I'm going to go, however, with a uh... – European, a European that is eight to one on the morning line in Port uh, Fortuna from uh, one of the O'Brien sons. Um, this horse has got a lot of experience already, Brian. Six starts, four wins, a second and a third, racing in, in uh, uh, tough spots in Europe. Got a group one win at Newmarket most recently and one at Royal Ascot against a field of 17. Yeah, it's interesting. The Europeans in this race have been running shorter, including Porta Fortuna. Um, always dangerous, always classy are these Europeans. She's certainly one with a shot. Carlos Way is another one that looks very good with her European form. But again, a wide open race in the juvenile Phillies turf. In the juvenile, I was a little bit surprised when I saw your top pick, Matt. I, I'm looking at this race. We don't have the pace projector up for the juvenile, but I'm looking at this race as a lot of early speed. And for me, that sets it up nicely for Locke. I really like his last two races, Saratoga, Keeneland. I think he beat a very good horse in the wine steward last time, and he went wide, rallied impressively to do it. For me, and I don't, I, I'm not buying the, the morning line. He's seven to two. I know that's not low, but he's the seven to two morning line favorite. I don't think so. I think it'll be one of the Balfour horses, uh, the Prince of Monaco or Muth as the favorite. But Locked is my top pick in the Jew. Yeah, I, I agree with your your uh, feelings about the morning line. I am going to go with uh, Timberlake. Uh, Timberlake is uh, is from the the. The barn of Brad Cox and uh, Timberlake uh, is uh, uh, doing well recently. Um, Timberlake uh, was the winner of the Champagne, which was on a really sloppy off track, and 
a week or so ago, you know, I'm having the feeling like I, I don't know the quality of that race, but but more recently, some horses have come out of that race and done well and won, not necessarily obviously coming to the Breeders' Cup, but they're running well out of that champagne. And that was a tough track to perform well on. And he won that race by four lengths. Yeah, he put General Partner away. Uh, Timberlake, I thought, was game in the hopeful. A very nice horse. But again, a horse I think that would be pretty close to the pace. And I think it's going to be a strong pace. That's why I went with Locked, Timberlake, Muth, uh, uh, Prince of Monaco. All four of them should get plenty of play. Timberlake probably is the fourth choice in the juvenile. Last race of the Breeders' Cup card on Friday is the juvenile turf. I said it about the juvenile Phillies turf, and it might even be more the case here. Wide, wide open. Um, I, I, I look for Europeans often in this race, and, and that's been good in recent years. But I, there was no European that jumped off the page at me here. Um, Endlessly has been doing things easily in California. He's got to win at the distance. He's got to win at the track. I just think Michael McCarthy scores has been toying with his competition out West and I could easily see him making it four for four to begin his career on Friday. Yeah. I had the same feeling from this race, Brian, you know, obviously uh, uh, when I'm handicapping these turf races, I I'm spending a lot of time looking at the Europeans. And like you said, I, I just didn't find one that particularly stood out for me. And, and as a matter of fact, I, I like, American horses better, including your top pick. I am going with uh, Agate Road, another horse that's eight to one on the morning line. This one with the combination of Todd Pletcher and Irad Ortiz Jr. Um, one, two in a row, including the Pilgrim in New York to prep for the Breeders' Cup. Yeah, he, he looked good in the Pilgrim, and he looked good getting up with no pace in uh, in that race before that at Saratoga. He would have been the, my second my second pick in here now. So we're we're kind of thinking alike uh, on the uh, juvenile turf in that wide open edition. All right, Matt, we got eight more races on Saturday. We're going to keep on rolling. Let's go. We're going to start with the first four Breeders' Cup races on Saturday. The Dirt Mile. I was all ready to pick Practical Move, who was my early Kentucky Derby pick. Uh, unfortunately, we lost Practical Move to a cardiac event the other day, Matt. Uh, very sad circumstance. Uh, it got me back on the favorite. I, I think the race sets up for Cody's wish. I have a good feeling he's going to win two in a row now that Practical Move is no longer with us. Yeah, I too was going to have Practical Move as my top pick, and, and I agree. Cody's Wish is absolutely the horse to beat in the Dirt Mile. Won it last year. Um, I'm again without practical move in there. I think I think he's going to be a pretty heavy favorite. I'm going to take a little shot against him. I am going to go with Zozos. I think this horse has a chance to get loose on the lead. Yeah, I, I wanted to do that, but I look at the speed of Algiers, who's an interesting horse in here, and, and maybe even Skippy Longstocking, and I don't know how easy Zozos will have it. So I thought of it, but in the long run, I just couldn't put anybody but Cody's Wish as my top pick. Philly and Mare Turf, um, tough, tough race, yet we both landed on the same horse as our top pick. That's Warm Heart, a really good three-year-old Philly from the barn of Aiden O'Brien. Yeah, and that's not going to happen too many times, I don't think, uh, Brian, that we're going to be on the same horse in terms of the top pick, although, you know, we often agree with the, the sentiment that that, our, that our, our, our partnership comes up with uh, in these races. But, yeah, like you said, uh, Warm Heart, Aiden O'Brien, Ryan Moore, they've won an awful lot of races. Two Group 1 wins um, in her last two starts. Uh, one of them at Longchamp in France and the other one at York. Again, like I said, looking at those Europeans carefully in these races, I thought she was a standout. Yeah, Inspirol is going to be a, a – a, a, she's the morning line favorite, but she's a, she's a miler. Uh, Warm Heart's coming out of 12 furlong races, so it's kind of an interesting 
uh, a, a cross section here where the mile and a half and the mile horse are going to meet. I think Warm Heart, well, Aiden O'Brien has said he thinks a mile and a quarter on firm turf will be right up for Alley. And I like her uh, in the late stages of this British Cup. I think there's some interesting horses from uh, America. Didia, by way of South America, has been running very well over here, has a win over the track. In Italian is always a threat. With the moonlight, Matt, she'll be my bomb here. She's 20 to 1 on the morning line. I think she has an outside shot for Charlie Appleby. Looks like in the next race, the Philly Mare Sprint, you're going with the bomb as your top pick. I am doing that, Brian. I am going with Kirsten Bosch. I think we mentioned her a little bit in our uh, long shot show um, in the Philly and Mare Sprint, which is seven furlongs in seven furlong races in general. I prefer horses that are late runners. Uh, um, we don't have the pace projector to put up on the screen, but a fast pace is predicted in here. I, I know that Kirsten Baum will have to probably run a little bit faster uh, than she has in other races, but her last race at Santa Anita was one of her best in a grade three at Santa Anita. Yeah, I'm with you there, Matt. I think Kirsten Bosch is a good uh, horse. She was both of our long shot picks for this race. Uh, the question is, is she good enough? Is she fast enough to win a race like this? I know society is fast enough. I, I just think society is right now the best horse in the race, uh, really coming to hand for trainer Steve Asmussen. Always talented. She's never broken through in a big race, a real big race. She did win the Cotillion last year, which is a great one. But she needs to prove it at the top level. I think society can prove it at the top level. She's going to do it in the Philly and Mare Sprint for me. Uh, good night, Olive. Clear morning line favorite. Matt and I both think, at least I think, and, and Matt didn't pick her on top, that uh, perhaps she is not quite as good as last year. We'll see. But as the as the chalk takes a, uh, we're going to take a shot to beat her. In the mile. You surprised me again. Matt's going for some for some odds picks here. I, I'm on the morning line favorite. Um, I don't think she'll be a heavy favorite. I don't think anybody in the race should be a heavy favorite. But I, I just look back at watch some of those races from Japan, and I think Songline is the best horse in the race. She is an absolutely outstanding uh, mare that can finish off race, races so strongly. Uh, she had a really nice return race, and she is all class as she's been for years over in Japan. I think she's the most likely winner. And, and the horse I was most afraid of mastering the seas through the 14 hole and a mile on the turf at Santa Anita. I don't really like that draw for master of the seas. Who's your pick, Matt? Yeah, I think uh, you mentioned that draw. It certainly was an influence on me uh, and, and then some other races where uh, horses are parked way outside. Um, yeah, uh, I agree with uh, the things that you said about Songline. But as I went through this race, if you're calling Songline a standout, after that, this this is a pretty wide open race where a lot of horses uh, uh, have a shot. And, and I went with uh, with Chad Brown on the turf. He's got Tyler Gaffleone uh, up because uh, uh, Tyler rode this horse last time in the First Lady at Keeneland which uh, Gina Romantica won probably the best performance of her career, 12 to one on the morning line. Um, I don't know. It's a tough race, but like to get her into the top three or in the winner's circle. Yeah. That went over in Italian was certainly a good performance last time as Keeneland. We both picked females in the Breeders' Cup mile and females have had good success as we know in the Breeders' Cup mile over the years. All right, Matt, we already talked about the Classic, so we're going to do four of the last five races, the Classic being the middle of the five, the last five Breeders' Cup races on Saturday. So we're going to go to the uh, the final uh, four of five here on this graphic. And as you can see, the Distaff is first, Matt, and it, it, it's an interesting race. Horses, three-year-olds, older horses, a lot of horses who haven't run against each other, a lot of horses coming off of a, a winning streak and uh, four to one on the morning line. I was a little surprised at that. I don't think Clarier will be that low. We both have her as our top pick. Yeah, I have a feeling I had that reaction to the morning line when I saw it. Also, uh, um, 
Hey, Brian, old standby handicapping adage, the pace makes the race. I feel like the distaff is a classic example of that uh, uh, pace projector showing a fast pace. Um, some of those streaking wind streak horses that you mentioned uh, um, are expected to be uh, part of the pace, idiomatic, a dare manner. Uh, that's a lot of speed right there. Uh, um, so I am looking for late runners, closers to do well in this distaff and, and Clarier over the years, over a great career, has shown those hard, gutsy closing moves. Um, I'm willing to uh, uh, draw a line through the last couple races, which were at Saratoga, and clearly her record shows that uh, she has not done as well uh, at the spa as in other places. Clarier for me, and the other closer that will be a much bigger price that might have a shot being wet paint. Yeah, not only do you have the two favorites in here, we're going to leave this time form U.S. Pace Projector up. Not only do you have the two favorites in the race, uh, in my eyes, that will be, uh, of course, idiomatic and Adair Manor as real speed horses. You also have Hoosier Philly, a talented three-year-old Philly getting blinkers on, drawing the rail. That helps me really believe that a fast pace is almost guaranteed here on Saturday afternoon. Throw in search results and randomized, who both also have plenty of early speed. And I think I think we're looking at something uh, pretty darn fast, pretty darn quick, pretty darn hard for any of those horses to win the race. I do think that all things being equal, idiomatic is the horse to beat in here, but I don't think it's equal. Pace makes the race, as you said. I, too, am looking for a rally, and Clary Ayer's got it for me. I don't mind her races two starts back when she got absolutely no pace in the shoe V and ran second. Last time was in slop. I'm going to draw a line right through that. I think Clary Ayer's the one to beat here Saturday, Matt. And, and like you, I think that uh, wet paint becomes a real usable long shot. Uh, uh, the three-year-old coming off some losses in races that didn't set up well for her. She's had some time between races. Now she gets a lot of pace. Wet paint will be my long shot uh, in the Breeders' Cup distaff. Let's go to the next Saturday race, Matt. That is the turf. Ooh, there are a lot of good horses in here. I'm looking at the international horses. I respect up to the mark. I respect Warlike Goddess. But uh, I'm looking at the international horses, maybe the top four or five. That's my top four or five picks in the Breeders' Cup turf. I love the way Onesto finished off the Arc de Triomphe when he was third, fast finishing third. I also think he's he is lightly raced this year and is improving, coming up to the Breeders' Cup in the right way. And I think I might get double digits on him. Yeah, Brian, I agree with what you said. And I know I mentioned on one of the past shows that horses that have been runner-ups or non-winners of the Arc have done very well uh, in the turf at the Breeders' Cup. Uh, in the past. And I agree with what you said as I look through this race. This race was overwhelmed with talented Europeans. I, my top four in this race are all Europeans. Um, and for me, I went with um, uh, Must Mustadaf. I always mess that one up for some reason. Uh, for John Gosden, uh, two big wins in a row in group ones, one at York, one at Royal Ascot. Uh, um, like I said, it could be uh, a European superfecta. Yeah. Top five for me are all international, so I, although I do have a Japanese horse in that as well. The turf sprint, Matt, I could not eliminate a single horse in the race. And for me, that tells me I need to pick somebody with odds. Roses for Deborah. Roses for Deborah has been so good sprinting. Uh, she's a pretty lightly raced four year old. Irad Ortiz is coming in to ride her. She's done really impressive wins until she got a softer turf last time, which she didn't like. She got beat against males at, at parks in the turf monster, but it wasn't the turf course that she wanted. I think she can bounce back as a long shot. She'll be my top pick in the turf sprint. 
fair enough, Brian. My top pick in here will be uh, Motorious, 5-1 to one on the morning line with the combination of trainer Phil D'Amato, who is one of the best turf trainers uh, on the West Coast, with uh, a talented jockey Flavian Pratt. Uh, Motorious has four wins out of six starts, is a late runner in here in a, a race that will certainly have plenty of early pace. Nice victory last time. Going that five furlongs, Brian, which is key to me. Yeah, he was a green flash last time, Matt, and certainly a horse with a big chance in the turf sprint. Finally, we have the sprint. This is the six furlong dirt variety, and we're both on elite power, Matt. Uh, we're both looking for a repeat of last year's uh, performance. I like the East Coast horses a little bit better than the Californians, but certainly I can't throw out Speedboat Beach or Dr. Shivel or the Chosen Braun. But my top two are here are Elite Power and Gunite, and I think Elite Power with that late kick gets it done once again. Yeah, I agree uh, um, uh, with everything you said. I'm going with Elite Power. Again, certainly when uh, Echo Zulu uh, was, an was unable to uh, run in this race, it opened things back up for Elite Power. Yeah, and there, there should be a fast pace there, which only helps Elite Power's late kick. All right, folks, the last thing, you got all our top picks, 14 of them. Matt, agreed, Matt and I agreed on a few, but lots of different options, lots of long shots thrown in there. Let's get right to our suggested wagers, Matt, or our favorite wagers from the two days. I'll let you go first, my friend. My pleasure, Brian. And uh, uh, I'm just going to go through and not say too much about these horses because uh, when I – cover these wagers i think you will recognize names and from myself and brian um that are showing up in this these wagers and and maybe understand why i've picked these out uh, on friday i am going to do a two-day daily double the daily double between the juvenile fillies and the disc staff ten dollar tickets and i've got four horses from the juvenile fillies candied scalable that brian mentioned as a, a long shot i've got tamara in there as as the big favorite along with just fyi and i am putting them with the two closers that we mentioned from the distaff wet paint and clary air matt i see you're braver than i am on saturday because i'm looking at those all turf and all dirt pick four races both of them and I just thought the turf was a little bit too tough for me, for my taste. So I'm probably going to make an all dirt wager on Saturday. But you have the all turf as one of your favorite wagers. I do, Brian. I think I hit that wager uh, last year. So I'm going to go to the well again. I'm not sure if the, is it a $3 minimum wager? Uh, I, I'm not sure. Either way, if it's a dollar, uh, $3 I'm going to go with. Anyway, um, Brian and I both like Warm Heart. I'm going to kick it off with a single from Warm Heart. And then uh, we we talked about uh, uh, the next race being a little bit tougher, the Philly and Mare turf. I've got four horses in there. Gina Romantica, my top pick. Brian's top pick of Songline, along with Casa Creed and Kalina. Some Some big prices in here. I tell you. If I hit this wager, it's going to be a big one. Uh, uh, and then we are going to the turf, and I've got three of those Europeans, Onesto, Auguste Rodin, Mostad, Mostada in there also. I thought about um, also putting in uh, another European, but I'm going with those three. And ending with the turf sprint, I got two. Nice prices. My top pick, Motorious, who's five to one, and Big Invasion, who is ten to one. So uh, uh, if that comes in, uh, it'll be nice. Yeah, you got some prices in there, Matt. The uh, Philly Mare Turf, the Mile, the Turf, and the Turf Sprint. Tough races, but if you do hit it, you're going to be happy. That's for sure. And then uh, I'm going uh, to the Turf Sprint. End of the day, 
uh, last chance to to pad the bank to 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 pad the earnings. Uh, a dollar trifecta. I am taking Big Invasion and Motorious in the top spot and the second spot with all the rest of the field. That's a $20 wager. And then I'm going to do another one of those $20 uh, trifecta total bets with those two on top again. But I'm going to put the all in second place and then put Big Invasion and Motorious in the uh, final spot. So uh, I think these are all wagers that have the potential to pay well. Probably not the only things that I'll be betting, but uh, uh, I thought these were interesting. Yeah, I, I know they won't be the only things you're betting, but good luck, Matt. I uh, I tried to keep it just a little bit simple here with my suggested wagers for you all. I am too. Uh, I'm also going with a two-day daily double to start things off on Friday. Mine will be the males, though. I, I, I kind of like the uh, horses that can come from just a little bit off the pace, locked. One of the favorites, but certainly not low in that juvenile. And then the wine steward is a bit of a long shot. Those are the top two from the Breeders' Futurity. So you can tell I like the Breeders' Futurity, but also I think somebody's come going to come from off the pace to win this juvenile. And then my top two for sure in the classic are White of Barrio and Ushba Tesoro. So this bet, bet made a lot of sense for me. $10 daily double, two horses in the juvenile, ten, two horses in the classic will cost you $40. On Saturday, I'm taking a swing here with Songline. I think Songline is going to win the mile. I've, like I said, I've been watching those races over in Japan. I, I, of course, I've known about her for a while, but she's impressive. And this year, there's, there's, there's a lot of horses in the mile who could win, but I don't like anybody nearly as much as Songline. So I'm going to single Songline in a pick three that starts in race six, which is the mile. Then it's going to go to the distaff, which you know Matt and I both like a little bit. I, too, have the two ralliers, Clarier and Wet Paint. I am protecting myself with Idiomatic a little bit. So she'll be my third in the distaff. And then I went five deep in the turf, and they're all international. Uh, the same three that Matt has, my top pick, Onesto, Auguste Rodin, Mostada, King of Steel I threw in as well. Big horse coming off a big win at Ascot. And then finally a bomb, but if you look at his past performances and you're willing to throw out the last performance, that Japanese horse, Shah Riyar, probably saying that horribly wrong, but uh, he is a very interesting bomb in the turf for me. So I'm all international there to close out my pick five. That'll cost you $75. If Songline wins, I'll, I'll be feeling good heading to the next two races. Finally, I have a uh, Distaff Classic Daily Double. That's a nice bet. Even though the races are not together, they're putting maybe the two most glamorous Breeders' Cup races together. And again, I'm using those same three, Idiomatic, Clarier, and Wet Paint to start it off with my top two in the Classic, which are White of Barrio and Ushpa Tesoro. From these suggested wagers, you can tell I'm really rooting for White, White of Barrio, Ushpa Tesoro, one of those to win the Classic. Love to see either Clarier or Wet Paint win the Distaff, and Songline will be my mile pick, Matt. All right, well, that is uh, a lot of top picks and a bunch of suggested wagers. I hope you all enjoyed the show. Let me get a parting shot from you, my friend. Yeah, we certainly uh, gave you a lot of information, uh, so feel free to watch the show again and stop at any of those graphics and uh, take a screenshot and, and uh, look at the types of wagers that we made and how we structured them to help you with other things that you might want to play during the day. Regardless of that, we're looking forward to the Breeders' Cup and all of the action on Friday and Saturday. And as always, I want to thank all of you for watching the show. Yes, thank you for all watching the show. Uh, if you haven't yet subscribed, do it now. Hopefully, Matt and I gave you a little insight that might help with your bets on Friday and Saturday. Also, thanks to Candace Curtis for the race graphic. Derby Wars, our sponsor, the best contest site out there. And, of course, Timeform US for the pace projections that we like to use right here on Horse Center. We'll be back next week with a Breeders' Cup recap. Until then, good luck. Enjoy the big weekend of racing. We'll see you then.